So I want you to imagine this. The year's coming to an end, you're winding down, everything just feels good, but there's a problem. You're eating the same thing that you've eaten every single year your entire life. Not anymore. Welcome to my ideal holiday feast. Ready for a Christmas story, children? Yes! Oh my God. It was the night before Christmas. Oven was preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Make the tangs on in a small saucepan. Remove and let cool slightly. Brush the buns with egg. Bake for about 15 minutes. In a heat-proof bowl, the warmed milk. Stir in the yeast. The end. That was beautiful, man. Now, if you have children, or you're a child, or you act like a child, it's the holiday season. The perfect buy. And 50% off on Amazon. The link's in the description. Happy holidays. Welcome back to another episode of Ah. Uh that's not what this is at all. One thing I do want to say, because I feel like I haven't had a one-on-one -on -one with you in a while. The year's coming to an end. I feel so many new things coming, and I just wanted to share with you that we're developing a ton of new ideas that we've never done before, because we're very focused on making new things that you guys are going to love. So thank you. We love you. We hope you have an amazing holiday season filled with hopefully good food. Let's face it, we like consistency. We're very habitual creatures. We do the same thing to make things easier. That doesn't need to apply to everything like the meal that you have on Christmas. Funny enough, I also do that. But my meals are at least exciting. This is one feast I could consistently do for years and years and years. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Listen, you're asking for more recipe-based content, you're gonna get it. Pull your pants up, buckle them extra tight. We've got a 48-hour truffle short rib beef wellington. Good lord. Smoked non prick pow prime rib. Sichuan honey roll a potato dish that's finally something different, and several other goodies that'll have you saying mommy in no time. Oh, and uh, don't forget we did holiday cookies too. Now, let's begin. If you're gonna make any of these things, please make the short rib wellington and forget all your troubles. FYI, you have to start this three whole days before you can eat it. Wait, Josh, I thought you said 48 hours. Well, hold your horses, buddy. First, you're gonna need about a five to six pound bone in short rib plate. Season that bad boy with salt and pepper, vacuum seal it in your largest vac bag. Obviously, prior to sealing this, you can totally sear it. And well, I didn't here, but to be honest, it wouldn't hurt. You can also so braise it if you don't have a sous vide. Anyway, once it's sealed, shove it into a sous vide bath set to 69 degrees Fahrenheit, nice, for 48 hours. Obviously try to time this in a way that you'll be around once that 48 hour timer gets ding a link. Now remove that hot boy from the water bath, place it on a sheet tray, place another sheet tray on top and weigh it down with something like a can of beans or whatever will flatten it out, about 15 to 20 pounds of pressure. Now make sure that that is flat and refrigerate overnight. Now a day before cooking, we start the chocolate chip cookies from my cookbook, which yes, I'll give them to you for free here because I love you, but you should get the book. It's a number one New York Times seller. Links in the description. Now, very simple. Medium-sized bowl, add three quarters of a cup or 160 grams of light brown sugar, three quarters of a cup or 150 grams of white sugar, one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of salt. Whisk that together, then whisk three quarters of a cup or 168 grams of melted unsalted butter, then whisk in one whole egg and one egg yolk, followed by two teaspoons or eight grams of vanilla extract, half a teaspoon or two grams of baking soda, one smooth and homogenous. Stir in one and a quarter cup plus one tablespoon or 197 grams of all-purpose flour. Mix until you get a smooth dough and please resist the urge to give the gok gok 3,000 to your cookie spoon and add eight ounces or 225 grams of rough chopped chocolate, ideally around 60 to 70 percent cacao if you like dark chocolate. Fold together gently, cover with plastic wrap, and refrigerate overnight. Now for the next cookie, there's a bit of a story. After much verbal abuse towards snickerdoodles from me and a few others in our Discord, which the link for that is in the description, I decided to make amends specifically to Kendrick by making only the finest of snick and doodle. Medium-sized mixing bowl. One cup or 227 grams of unsalted butter as softened as humanly possible, you know, without being melted. Cream that together using an electric handheld mixer with one and a half cups or 315 grams of granulated sugar until light and fluffy. Then beat in two whole eggs and one egg yolk, followed by two and a half teaspoons or 12 grams of vanilla extract. Now, in a separate bowl, add two and a half cups or 375 grams of all-purpose flour, one and a quarter teaspoon or six grams of fine sea salt, not kosher salt, not rock salt, fine sea salt, please. One and a half teaspoons or two grams of cream of tartar, half a teaspoon or half a gram of baking soda. Whisk that together till combined and then add your dry mixture to your wet and fold together until you have a smooth, beautiful, luxurious dough. Again, no gawk gawking your cookie spoon. Cover with plastic wrap and chill for at least 20 minutes or overnight. Now, at this point in time, you're already here, so you might as well mix together your cinnamon sugar ahead of time so it's ready when you need it, which is literally just a quarter cup or 55 grams of granulated sugar and one tablespoon or 10 grams of ground cinnamon. Whisk together until evenly combined, and that's exactly what you're going to roll your balls in. Uh, your sugar cookie balls, I mean. Now, what else could we do the night before? Well, if you're making these ultra crunchy patatas bravas, 
Then please do yourself a favor and toss three to four pounds of russet potatoes in an oven set to 450 Fahrenheit for one hour or just until soft and easily pricked with a fork. Then let those chill completely in the fridge overnight. Now on the day of cookery, take your ribs out of the bag, split them into two lengthwise, and carefully slice them off the bone, staying as close to the bone as possible. Cut those into two and a half inch wide by five to six inch long logs. Think, you know, sort of mini tenderloins. And listen, since we were running out of light, I skipped searing them, which had surprisingly good results, but you know, I'd recommend maybe searing this very quickly on all sides. Now brush those bad boys all over with hot mustard, season with some additional salt to taste, and let that rest. Look, if you've ever seen beef wellington, then you've seen a duxelle. Well, it's very simple. Six ounces or 168 grams of brown button mushrooms, rough chopped, and two ounces or 56 grams of fresh shiitake mushrooms, rough chopped as well. Pop those in a food processor and pulse until fine, but not a paste. Then get a medium-sized saucepan, add two tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter, set to medium heat, and once melted in, Add in one finely chopped shallot, season that lightly with salt, and saute till softened, which is about three minutes. Add your mushrooms, season with salt, toss in one to two sprigs of rosemary, and cook that down for five to six minutes. Now look, I know you're probably thinking, God, this kind of smells metallic and weird, Josh. Let it keep cooking, and all of a sudden, oh. <laughs> Yeah, those mushrooms kind of smell good. Now, once most of the water is evaporated, add a quarter cup of dry sherry wine and cook that down until no liquid remains, stirring occasionally. Remove your sprig of rosemary. Now, cut the heat completely off and stir in one tablespoon or 18 grams of white miso and one whole ounce or 28 grams of finely grated black truffle. Oh, and of course, two cloves of very finely chopped garlic. Stir that all together and your duxel is done. Now, for the crepe. Yes, traditional beef wellington can contain a crepe from time to time and, well, I think it's the best with it. Mix together three whole eggs and two tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter, one and a half cups or 360 grams of whole milk, one teaspoon or six grams of fine sea salt, one cup or 150 grams of all-purpose flour, whisk until you get a smooth batter, then get a 12-inch non-stick skillet, grease lightly with cooking spray, set over medium heat, and once that's hot, so hot, ladle in about a third cup of your batter and swirl it around the pan so it coats in one single thin layer. Remember, the thinner these are, the better. Reduce or increase the amount of batter to get to that point. Let that cook for about 30 to 45 seconds, flip and cook for 25 to 30 more seconds. Done. Repeat that until you have five beautiful crepes, because I know you're gonna f up a few of these, and it's totally fine. Papa, still kiss you. Now we assemble. First, a nice layer of plastic wrap. This is actually two sheets placed slightly overlapping each other, so it's nice and wide. Now, crepe down. Then three to five slices of good prosciutto shingled together nicely. Spread a quarter of your duxelle edge to edge, nice and flat. Now look, the goal is once this is wrapped, it should perfectly enrobe your meat, you know, around the entire perimeter. And you know how I feel about perfectly enrobing my meat. I take it seriously. Place a portion short rib at the bottom of the crepe. Roll that all the way up, letting your plastic wrap do its thing. Roll the edges tightly so it's nice and tot. Repeat with all your meat and refrigerate while you make all your other stuff. Next, prime rib. Start with a medium-sized bowl, add half a cup or 80 grams of softened beef tallow and a quarter cup or 50 grams of Dijon mustard. Beat together till combined, then add five cloves of finely chopped garlic, two teaspoons or four grams of fresh cracked pepper, one tablespoon or five grams of finely chopped rosemary, one and a half tablespoons or 15 grams of kosher salt, three tablespoons or 38 grams of non prick pow. I mean, I'm telling you, there's something special about that ingredient. Whip all that together, and then finally, beat in one tablespoon or 19 grams of dark soy sauce. Once that's combined, rub that all over a six to eight pound prime rib roast. This bad boy is boneless, but you could totally do bone in. I'm not judging you. Pop that bad boy into a smoker set to 225 Fahrenheit for four hours or until internal temperature registers 128 Fahrenheit. Obviously, you could do that in a low oven if you don't have a smoker, just as a heads up. Now, while that is cooking, we must move and complete the rest of our tasks. First, Sichuan honey garlic rolls. First, in the bowl of a stand mixer, combine four cups or 600 grams of all-purpose flour, a third cup or 75 grams of granulated sugar. Josh, that's so much sugar. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's a holiday meal. What, do you want to diet? Two teaspoons or 12 grams of fine sea salt. Whisk till combined. Then in a separate container, add one cup or two 240 grams of water and a quarter cup or 59 grams of whole milk. Heat to 95 Fahrenheit and whisk in two and a half teaspoons or 10 grams of instant yeast till dissolved, followed by one large egg. Beat till homogenous, turn on your stand mixer with the dough spiral thing attached. Begin mixing on medium low, add your big watery milky boy to the bowl and mix until you get a rough dough. You can always add a little extra water if your dough looks too dry. Now mix for three minutes, then add half a cup or 112 grams of softened unsalted butter, about three tablespoons at a time until all of it's been added. If your butter's not softened, by the way, this is gonna be a terrible time for you, so just remember that. Now, once you have a smooth dough, roll it into a rough ball, cover with plastic wrap, and rise for one hour at room temperature. When you're ready, punch all the love and life you worked so hard to breathe into your dough. Divide into specifically 69 gram pieces. Are you noticing a trend here? Now that should get you a minimum of 15 pieces. Roll all pieces into doit balls and place in a 12 inch cast iron skillet that's been generously greased. There is a certain finesse to fitting these in here, so just try to work it around so that they're evenly spaced like this. So if they're not perfect, they're still gonna be delicious. Now cover with greased plastic wrap and proof at room temperature for one hour. Then brush those bad boys 
with egg wash, which is just one egg beaten together with one teaspoon of water till homogenous, and bake at 350 Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes or until beautifully brown, and the internal temp is 195 Fahrenheit. Now all those bake in a small pot. Melt together a third cup or 75 grams of salted butter, half a teaspoon or half a gram of ground Sichuan peppercorns, one teaspoon or three grams of gochugaru, and three tablespoons or 64 grams of honey. Melt till loosey-goosey and combined. Then once your buns are done, pull them out and brush all of your finished buns while they're still piping hot with your Sichuan honey butter. Be generous. You know, this is the holiday season. It's not really the time to be shy on butter, okay? Don't start here. Douse that with a generous layer of flaky salt and let those cool completely. Now, obviously, these are actually best if they're still warm from the oven when served. If you really want your buns to never be resisted again, I would recommend that. I know you have a deep-seated fear of your buns being rejected. Not this time. What about cream spinach? Hmm? How about no? What about spinach artichoke dip? They're basically the same thing, but I feel like everyone picks spinach artichoke dip nine times out of ten. See where I'm going? Crank your oven up to 375 Fahrenheit and to a medium-sized pan, add two tablespoons of 14 grams of salt and butter. I've been doing VO for a while, so, you know. Thank you for continuing to watch. By the way, I really appreciate you and I love you so much. Will you please subscribe if you're not already? Once melted and hot, add four cloves of finely chopped garlic and saute till fragrant, then add four cups or 110 grams of spinach. Cook stirring often till wilted, then remove from the pan and drain in a fine mesh strainer until you've drained as much water as you can. Finally chop your spinach till it looks like this. Then in a medium-sized bowl, beat together half a cup or 110 grams of softened full-fat cream cheese and half a cup or 100 grams of creme fraiche. Once combined, whisk in a quarter cup or 21 grams of grated parmigiano reggiano. Season a taste with salt. Finally, fold in one cup or 150 grams of rough chopped artichoke hearts. Your drained spinach, mix till combined, then grease a three-quart baking pan with cooking spray, add your mixture, and spread evenly around the pan. Now, separately, you're going to toss together a third cup or 35 grams of mozzarella cheese and a third cup or 33 grams of Monterey cheese. Mix till combined, then sprinkle your cheese on top of your dip and bake for 20 minutes or till melted, bubbling, and the top is crisp and brown. Now, obviously, you can eat this with chips, but I like to get really naughty with it and just add a nice dollop on my plate. Eat it with whatever you like. Now, everything is just about finishing up, so we can quickly move to our sides. Let's talk about this spicy garlic accordion cucumbers. I mean, come on. So you need six to eight Persian cucumbers. Should have been six to nine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to get them like this, you'll use two chopsticks to hold them in place, and first you're gonna cut at quarter inch intervals with your knife facing at a 45 degree angle, so sort of like a bias. Then flip that over to the other side, and this time you're gonna cut completely straight, again, at a quarter inch intervals. Bada bing, bada boom, look at that. Now repeat with all of your cups. Yeah. Mix together one tablespoon or 13 grams of sugar and one tablespoon or 11 grams of kosher salt. Once that's combined, Season your cucumbers generously and let them cure for five minutes. Drain any excess water that comes from those. Then in a small separate bowl, mix together two tablespoons or 30 grams of soy sauce, one and a half tablespoons or 18 grams of rice vinegar, half a teaspoon or three grams of yuzu juice, two and a half tablespoons or 24 grams of chili oil with some of its solids if it has any. If it doesn't, you are using not the right chili oil. And finally, a pinch of MSG. Stir together, add to your cucumbers, toss and look at that. Pop into a bowl and top off with chiffonade daikon or thinly sliced green onions to garnish. Oh, and some toasted sesame seeds never hurt anybody. Unless you're deathly allergic to them, which I guess it has. Next, elote holiday? You're got dang right, brother. Small mixing bowl, one cup or 220 grams of koopy mayo, half a teaspoon or half a gram of ancho powder, half a teaspoon or half a gram of chipotle powder, a pinch of MSG, salt to taste, and one tablespoon or 14 grams of lemon juice. Whisk till combined. Now get yourself four to six corn on the cob, split them in half. And when you're about to serve these, you're gonna drop them into a large pot of boiling water, or you can grill them for about three minutes or just until they're hot. Remove and brush every single side generously with your mayo mixture. Coat completely in fresh grated kotsuhi cheese, stack them nicely on a plate, sprinkle with some shimi togarashi, hit with some hot sauce of choice, this is Valentina, fresh cilantro all over, and I mean, come on, that looks like an elote built for year-round pleasure, which we all deserve. What about mashed potatoes, Josh? Look, make any of our mashed potato recipes, or finally switch it up for once with these papatapa bravas. Wait, papa, these patatas bravas. What? You know what I mean. First, the bravas sauce. Relax, it's ridiculously easy. In a medium sauce pot, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom, heat over medium, add one diced sweet onion, and four cloves of rough chopped garlic. Saute that just until softened, about five minutes. Then add one and a half teaspoons or seven grams of sugar and one 14 ounce or 400 gram tin of crushed tomatoes. Oh, and a third cup or 78 milliliters of water and one tablespoon or seven grams of sweet paprika. Stir, bring to a boil over medium high, reduce to low and simmer till reduced and thickened. Throw that into a blender, blend on high until as smooth as possible. Then stream in three tablespoons or 45 milliliters of your finest extra virgin olive oil while constantly blending. Once that's all added and emulsified, pour into a bowl, season to taste with salt and it's simple but beautiful, much like a perfectly folded tea shirt, except you can eat this. Now, for the potatoes, you'll take your baked chilled potatoes from earlier, cut them into bite-sized cubes, heat a six-quart pot filled with three-quarts of vegetable oil to 350 Fahrenheit, and fry your potatoes in batches for two to three minutes or till golden brown and crisp. Drain on a paper towel, season immediately to taste with salt. Please don't go light with the salt here, okay? Oh, these potatoes are so good. Starter pack. 
Once they're all fried, get them on a platter and add generous randomized dots of your Bravas sauce all over. And optionally, but highly recommended, do the exact same thing with dots of mayo. And this is the most perfect, creamy, salty, sweet, rich, crispy potato. And there's not much changing my mind on that. Now, listen to me. I'm sick and tired of hearing cranberry slander. Just make a Thai chili apple jam to replace it. Yeah, for the haters. First, peel four pounds or 1.8 kilos of Fuji apples, core all those bad boys, and cut the flesh in half inch chunks. Pop that into a large sauce pot and add two cups or 420, nice, grams of sugar and let that mass for 10 minutes. Then add three finely chopped Thai chilies, half a cup or 120 milliliters of water, and three tablespoons or 35 grams of yuzu juice. Mix together and bring to a boil over medium-high heat. Then once boiling, reduce the heat to medium and let that reduce, stirring often until your apples turn a glossy translucent and the liquid has reduced to a thick syrup. Cool completely and serve in a bowl. All right, let's button this feast up. First, your Wellington. You may need a two to three X recipe of my puff pastry, or you can just buy two to three boxes of frozen puff pastry. I like the brand do four, but you know, it's up to you. Now roll one of those out until you get a large rectangle that's about a quarter inch thick. Now unwrap a welly, place it at the base of that puff pastry. Roll it up just until the seam is about to meet with the pastry. Trim any excess dough. You want just enough for the Wellington to be rolled up. Brush that part with egg wash consisting of two egg yolks and one and a half teaspoons of water. Just, you know, acting sort of as a glue. Finish rolling and press to adhere. Repeat with all of your Wellington. Trim the edges lightly. Wrap in plastic wrap nice and thoit to close those edges. And chill in the fridge for at least 20 minutes. Now at this point you can bake your cookies. So scoop out your chocolate chip cookie dough into two ounce balls. Space them at least two and a half inches apart on a baking sheet lined with parchment. You'll notice these aren't really two and a half inches apart. And I'll tell you why that's a problem. Once you've loaded up your baking sheets with your chocolate chip cookie dough, you will bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes or until very light golden brown around the edges. And the cookies are set but slightly raw in the center. Now, pull them out. And here's what happens when you don't space them out enough. Look, they're still the greatest chocolate chip cookie, but due to their high fat content, they will spread very quickly and relatively aggressively. So let those cool completely on a wire rack, even though they're kind of fucked up. Now, moving on to sugar cookies. Roll those bad boys into one ounce balls. Roll your balls in your cinnamon sugar, the cookies, that is. Pop those onto a baking sheet in rows of three, about two and a half inches of space between each. You should be able to handle the rows of three because they don't spread nearly as bad, surprisingly. Once your sheet is filled up, press them lightly with the greased flat bottom of a cup or glass until lightly flattened. Bake each tray at 350 Fahrenheit for nine to 10 minutes or until just barely golden and set on the tray. Slightly under baking them is the key to ultra soft. Remove from the oven and cool for a few minutes on the pan, then transfer to a wire rack to cool completely. Now, let's finish off our proteins. Once the primary bridge is an internal temp of 128, as previously mentioned, pull it out of your smoker and rest that bad boy for 15 minutes. During that time, crank your oven to the absolute maximum temperature it goes, which should be close to or at 500 Fahrenheit. Once it's ripping hot, toss your prime rib onto a sheet tray and blast at max heat for 10 minutes or until just brown nicely. Remove from the oven, reduce the temp to 475 Fahrenheit and rest your big old mate for 25 to 30 minutes. Now, as for the welling you can remove it from your fridge, brush it immediately with your egg yolk wash. Optionally, if you have some excess dough, you can roll it out, use a lattice cutter, you know, make it look nice like that, and layer it on top of your wrapped Wellington. Totally up to you, but it looks nice. Or you can do the Gordon Ramsay scoring method by using the back of your knife to gently carve three to four nice swooshes in a row on both sides, and then one down the middle to create sort of a leaf branch or herb sprig of some sort. Gordon, I love you. If you're watching, hey, come hang out. Hit all those generously with flaky salt and pop into your oven for 20 to 25 minutes, or just until the pastry is golden brown and cooked through. Remove from the oven, rest five minutes, and now let's see that cross section and oh my goodness. Such juicy melt in your mouth, short rib succulents my eyes have never seen before. Slice up your beef, serve up your veggies, plate things up beautifully, and let's taste test. Look at all this <laughs> This took all day. We somehow managed to make all this in one day, except for this, because that takes like 48 hours, but we'll ignore that. I would like to try it. <laughs> that is the best Wellington we have ever made. And funny enough, I thought it would be too rich. It's not. It's like the mixture of a braised short rib and the most most perfectly roasted, juicy, tender beef of all time. You may never make a Wellington any other way again. Uh, artichoke dip? Oh. <laughs> if you're gonna make cream spinach, forget it. Just make the artichoke dip and call it a day. It's not that different. Tatas Bravas from the cookbook. Link in the description. You don't have to go this hard on the lote, but if you do, you're not gonna regret it. Salty, acidic, fatty, spicy, everything you want. Not that spicy. Prime rib, smoked, smoky, rich, fatty. The reality is it's a classic prime rib. If you love prime rib, this is how you do it. I have many methods. This is one of many methods. Vikram, the Wellington, very up your alley. I think you need to try it. This is the second time on this channel that I've just drank meat. Drank meat? The Italian beef in this one. This guy sucks meat down. Next, the lote. On the money. Where's your cart? Where's my what? Your lote cart. JW's a lote cart coming to a store near you. I don't want to say anything because it's going to sound 
Cucumber! You're doing good, sweetie. Very juicy. You get slurp in that pork. I'm here for the go, bread. Go for the center. Yeah. Hell yeah! Wait, you gotta taste it. Come back here. This is so good. Thank you. This is a really important story. Please listen. We had a Discord stage, which if you're not on the Discord, link's in the description. He was there. We were talking about holiday meals, and I don't know what it was. Back to back. Everyone was like, screw snickerdoodles. We were demolishing it, mostly me. And Kendrick just kind of sat there and was sad. And so these are for you, Kendrick. Snickerdoodle. We'll see if you are really the chef you say you are, Weissman. Good. There shouldn't have been any sound whatsoever. Yeah, when the cookie has a silencer. That's a good snickerdoodle. Melts in your mouth, buttery, almost creamy, sweet, has a lingering flavor that sits on the tongue just nice. I'm tired of all the cranberry hate. Fine, here's something that doesn't have cranberry in it. If you need a little bit of sweetness to cut the richness, this is the answer. It's apple-y, it's caramelized, a little spicy. It fits on your plate much better than cranberry sauce if you're a little hater. That's it, my ideal holiday feast is here for you. You've asked for it for years. And so now that you've seen this, this is what it looks like with the light off. B-roll.